Great. Okay. All right. So um, welcome to the the second six scale meeting. Um, the add your name to the attendees list for the doc uh, if you can. Um, so I'm going to recap first. Uh, what, um, real quick, can you post the doc yeah. to the chat? Because yeah, I can't I can't find it. Yeah, you got it. Um, give me a second. We need to add it to the calendar as well. Unless oh, I missed it, it, it wasn't there. there. Yeah, so it's kind of frustrating. Okay, here, um, I should do it. Okay. All right, so to uh, to, to kick things off, um, so I'm gonna just recap very briefly um, what we talked about last week. Um, so basically, like, I mean, since there wasn't a recording, I figured we'd just go over it again, just very, very briefly. So last week I talked a little bit of, um, kind of introduced the concept of what six scale is, what's it do, trying to do, what we, the goals we can accomplish. And I, I mainly highlight a lot of what we talk, what I talk about here at the top of this, throughout this document, some of the goals, the scope and different topics that um, we can go into and explore and um, investigate. And so um, basically, um, to kind of recap the scope, um, we want to define and drive the scalability and performance goals within QVert. We want to document, we want to test, and we want to measure scalability of QVert and performance across releases. So um, to kind of to kick me off at this meeting, um, you know, one, the first step I want to look to take in this direction is um, is is the steam of establishing a baseline. Um, it, one of the things like, to measure, we, we need to know where we are. We need to understand like, okay, what's, where are we at today and, and where can we, where can we go? So we have these, these goals, um, with where we can go with perf. So let's see what, you know, what our Delta is. Um, so the kind of the two things that, that kind of push toward this goal, um, that I could see at least in the immediate term. And one of them we're going to look at today. So the first is a, a tool to measure, um, uh, and report performance. Um, there's a mailing list thread that I just wanted to call attention to um, that was recently posted that, that's looking at, at doing at doing this, creating a tool that we can measure performance and, um, and report it upstream. And then we also had some folks last meeting who talked a little bit about how they wanted to add some metrics around this and, and add it to CI. So uh, we can have that discussion, uh, definitely. Or we should have that discussion in the, uh, on the mailing list and, and something we can even call to more attention to uh, next uh, the meeting next time uh, if, if needed. But since it was started yesterday, I figure we can just uh, um, I call attention to it and we can discuss it in the mailing list for now. So today, what I wanted to do um, with everyone here is uh, I want to do a little bit of an exercise, kind of and how we can establish a baseline. I wanted to look at how we could um, build a sequence diagram for what happens when you create a virtual machine instance. I, I think this is um, it's it's a there's a lot of things that happen. There's a lot of code paths that it goes through. And, and we're talking about like trying to figure out what are the bottlenecks with, with perf and scale. It's good to have at least a diagram that we can all reference as a something that when we're talking about a concept or an area of the code, we can at least know, okay, you know, when Ryan's talking about there's this bottleneck in this area, we can go look at our diagram and say, okay, here's kind of where he was talking about it. And, and we can get a sense of, um, you know what, what's going on in that area. So I think um, uh, this would be a way we can kind of uh, at least streamline our communication and at least get a better understanding of what's going on. So I wanted to spend a few minutes on that and then um, we can also talk about any open items. So as folks add, if there's anything you want to talk about, we can we can transition to that. So um, what I'm going to do is um, everyone that's here, um, I uh, if you guys can open up a terminal um, if you want to participate in kind of looking through the code, or if you want to even help um, do some work, or even look in the diagram, or if you just want to follow along, that's great. Um, what, so pretty much what I'm asking here is there's a there's a link here for the sequence diagram, and what we're going to do is um, oh, I'm going to move my tab here. There we go. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, look through the code, and we're going to try and find some paths like I have here, um, and some function calls. And, and we're going to put some numbers to them and kind of and, and, and talk a little bit about what they're what they're doing, just you know, like a one line phrase or something. Um, so I did the API ahead of time, since the, this is uh, I figured we'd skip this and go right to the controller and the and the handler and see how far we can get. Um, so just kind of walk through like what I'm what I did here with like uh, and how I how I built put these boxes in. And, and again, also this is um. 
if you want to click the link, uh, you can join this that that draw.io session yourself and you can actually do edits. It's a little bit slow. So if we're doing them together, like if I move this box, it'll take a few seconds for you to see it, but uh, it'll eventually show up there. Um, but so what I what I did here um, and kind of the criteria for these boxes is um, whenever I see something happening, um, like, okay, we have a call from the user to create a VMI, it goes to the API server. Our second step is going to be that there's a mutating webhook that, that comes into play. You know, what's the location of that? Of that, it starts right here. So we have a starting point of where it is in code, um, and then a function that the that it gets uh, that gets called. And then in that function, there's a bunch of things that are going to happen. Like we apply presets, we set some default values. Um, so like things maybe like uh, you know like. You, you probably don't think about like the your clock or something for the for the VMI is going to get set automatically in, in some in a place like this, or some other stuff like that um, that you don't probably want to do every single time you create a VMI are going to be set automatically. Um, so this is where that happens, and so all these presets get applied. We set some defaults, um, and then we end up returning all the way back to a, a valid VMI. So this isn't necessarily every step, um, but it's. Uh, it shows like the, the gist of what happens. And when I have three boxes here, what I'm, what I'm saying is like, there's multiple values that are being set here. So like, you know, maybe we set the clock, maybe we set, um, you know, some other, something else is, but there's a whole list of them and in the code, you'll see that. Um, and here's another example, like we, we validate some fields, like we want to validate all the virtual machine instance fields. So there's, I set three boxes here because we we're going to validate a bunch of things. Um, and then, so, the step three is the validating webhook. And then we have our object creation. So this is where um, I wanted to start um, as uh, first place that we're going to go when um, we create this VMI object. So I'm going to go, um, let me move to my terminal here. What I'm going to do, let me see if I can split to the left. <laughs> Did we lose them? I think we did. Did we lose Ryan as soon as he split his screen? Or... Yeah, it probably crashed. That's funny. <laughs> We're uh, pinging Ryan on our end. Yeah, I'm just looking him up on Slack and uh, it doesn't look both alive.
Is anyone here for him? It's like his internet disappeared rather than just this session. Yeah, I'm not able to to reach him. Hello, oh, can you hear me? All right. Oh, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I, I lost back. internet connection. Yeah, thank you. I lost internet connection. I don't know what happened. I'm tethering for my phone right now. Um, well, let's, <laughs> let's see how this works. Um, well, let's see if I can even uh, share here. Give me one second. I don't know what's happening. I'm having to restart my home internet. Okay, um, let's see. I'm, well, my home internet reboots. Um, I'm gonna let me try to share my screen again. Okay, you should see my screen. Yeah. Um, again. Okay, I can't get to my home network right now, so I'm not gonna be able to use my terminal. I don't think uh, unless I have Qvert locally. I don't know. But, uh, oh, I do. Okay, so um, well, we can try this, Let's see if this works. Well, hold on, let me go back to the diagram. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know where I got cut out, but um, so the first step um, that uh, we wanted to go through is the, the package for controller, watch VMI.go. So um, if, uh, if anyone can shout out kind of what, the next step is here. I'm gonna. I'll try and see if I can find it in my uh, at the same time. But if you, well, you all have your terminals open, see if you can find. If this, so this is the path where we watch for VMIs. What's like the yeah. function call that's gonna happen? It's gonna be sync. So what sync. happens is we're we're watching the VMIs. That's gonna queue um, a VMI onto the work queue, which is then processed by the sync function. Okay. And so we do a sync. And it's going to uh, do a few things from there. It's going to see if a pod already exists for this VMI. So as part of the startup flow, if a pod does not exist, then it's going to render a new pod for the VMI to run in. Is this a function call or is it just like an if check? Uh, it's a if check that results, let me see exactly how. Yeah, it's more of an if check right now. So uh, just a um, word of caution here. A lot of this, uh, I have it at least in my backlog to begin uh, simplifying some of these code paths, which is going to involve taking these giant functions that we have with all this branching logic and try to make uh, smaller functions out of it. So anything that we have in this diagram, maybe we don't want to talk about the function outside of the top level function, which is sync. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, just want to get to, yeah, like what we, if we can simplify it as to like what happens in here, just like maybe it doesn't exist, maybe it's like, what does sync do? And then, or like, or yeah. some important call it makes, that'd be good. Good, good, okay. Um, so if the pod doesn't exist, it's gonna create it. That's the simplest next step. Okay. Is, that, is, is, there, is there a create pod call or something? Or is that like- um, it, I mean, it calls the, it's just the API call to, it's literally within uh, the sync function. It's going to call create. It's going to render the pod, which is happening in our uh, template um, package. Maybe it's called service, okay. but it's template.go. And then it's going to post the result of that to the cluster. So post that, that rendered okay. pod. So we're going to go back so to the API then. Was Sync recently re renamed? Because in the 0 0.35 base that I'm used to, it's it's that's called Execute at that stage. Is it renamed later on? Let's see what Execute. And, the, and it's Execute calls Sync once um, conditions are satisfied, and the Sync creates the pod if it needs to. No, you're right. I mean, that's the that's the top top level. Okay. Function. Okay. Uh, we could we could say that. The work is done in sync. It's kind of like sync will get called once all the conditions, the right conditions are met. Uh, whatever works what best for you all. Yeah, well, so I, does this make sense? So like I, 
we it, it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be like, you know super precise and like we just i want to know like okay if i want to see what um is going to like if i want to understand like when when i want to create this this vmi you know what how does the vert launcher pod gets created i, I can see it right here like I, I just want just a general gist of like what what happens i think this this covers it like i can see that sync is going to have is going to do trigger some sort of creation if it doesn't exist we, we might want to so include the execute because it, it calls the update status which is what drives the um updates through the different phases until we get to scheduled and um, okay so the when does the update um when does that happen or when does the execute happen sorry when's the uh, execute um, is, is the uh, the work queue um worker function so uh, it's execute that calls sync so it'll be execute that execute receives the vmi event and uh, okay. and execute does some other event. work too right that's right. Uh, that's what I was saying. Is the execute uh, ultimately oh, okay. calls the um, update status, which uh, you know drives all the status updates okay. and watches so we'll the do... pod status. And also, before creating the pod, um, uh, the vert, vert controller also using a um, pod accept, uh, exception a mechanism to do a lot of uh, uh, create and uh, validate exceptions. Um, uh, you mean, uh, are you talking about the expectations? Uh, yeah, uh, ex expectations. Yeah, so that's being done as kind of a ref, for you guys probably are familiar, it's, it's ref counting uh, to make sure that we don't process, um, we don't call sync until we've observed the change that's already occurred. So if we create a pod, we're never going to sync that VMI again until we've observed that our informer has detected Basically, the round trip has occurred. We've both created the pod and been informed that uh, that's that's kind of stuck, and the API server has told us that it exists. If we don't do that, for example, uh, this execute function would uh, happen, and we wouldn't find the pod if it executed before our informer caught up. So then we could create like multiple pods for the VMI. The expect um, the expectation uh, stored in another uh, uh, cache cache store, right? So um, there there should be different uh, uh, there should be a different uh, synchronization aside with the informers, or the VMI informers. Do we well, I I understand. So I understand some of the discussion, but I wanted. Before we even dive into some of the, what we, how we should look at this though, like I, I want, I kind of just want to get like the high level path, like the, and then we can, because I, I could see like what you're saying, like there's some important details in each of these, um, and I could see it exploding out into some of them, yeah. and we could even do that um, if we want to, but I want to, if we can just okay. boil it down a little bit, or kind of bring it up a little, bring it up kind of a little bit, and then and then we can we can expand these out even more. Like I can just copy and paste and add some things. So like the gist here, what I'm getting is that we're we go into this VMI Go function. We're going to run an execute um, that starts like our processing loop. Like we're gonna so we're gonna like we're gonna call this like process VMI because we've we've noticed the VMI. We're gonna process it. So then we run execute. Execute's gonna first call sync sync is going to notice that the pod doesn't exist so we're going to create it so now we have a pod a vert launcher pod so um what what happens now like are we are we looping somewhere here we're watching because we're we're going to watch this state and that's going to happen continuously now what are we doing we're still we're watching this right this may be we're waiting here, we're actually. watching everything so we're watching vmis uh we're watching pods we're watching pvcs all kinds of stuff but the state we're specifically waiting for is for that uh, vert launcher pod to come online. Okay. So we're waiting to hand it off to Vert Handler, which is going to do the rest of the startup flow. Okay. So then I'm going to move this to here. Then we're going to. Okay. So we create that. Okay. So now you said That's they were watching this. this. Is that yeah, the, the natural? Yeah. Go ahead. As I could say, that, that execute is um, triggered for both 
VMI update uh, and also for a pod, we look up the controller associated with the VMI and then tickle the same key um, and go through the same execute loop. So for, for every update event on the pod, we'll, we'll file a, a VMI event um, to execute and go through that same execute loop for it. And that's that's how we monitor as the lab, as, as the pod makes progress, you know, once it's uh, got a node assigned and all those sort of things, that's how we can see that. Okay, so this little arrow should also be going up here. Okay, and then I don't know if there's a return here for this or this now. Okay. So, okay, so we have this execute loop. Okay, so what else are we doing in here? Since now we're, we're watching um, the pod. I think, it's not, I think it's not watching a pod. So once the, the pod is created, the, uh, the event handler will add this pod into the queue, the worker queue of the uh, controller. So the controller will pick up the key from the queue and ask, uh, ask uh, execute again in the loop, right? Okay. Yeah, so then um, I'm just trying to think of how I can illustrate that. Um, yeah, we are, we have our informer and we're getting, we're picking up events from it. So this is where it happens. So we, we could be, um, uh, I mean, I could just call it watch for events. Watch for PMI events. Watch for pod events. And then this would, so this is probably reconcile then. Right, that's what we're doing here. Or maybe a sync is reconcile. No, it's reconcile. Anything that, Okay. yeah, I think you're right. Okay. So we go to execute. So we have two things that can trigger a reconcile and execute. Execute creates pods. So we're, um, okay, so we have events that are being processed. Um, okay, so what about the events? Like what else happens in here? Execute, we have sync. Um, are there any, what are the detail could we say? Like, um, like I'm trying to get to, so you said we hand over the pod to the vert handler. What else, what else am I missing? So this vert launcher has to go to a certain state. We're watching for that state. Does that also go through sync and then probably picks a different path than create pod? I think it's yeah, actually it calls, uh, updates, updates status. Yeah. That's right, yes. Sorry, so, repeat that. The sync is the thing that's going to create the pod. Uh, we're going to observe all these things that are going on. So the pod and the VMI and all that. And update status is what ultimately I believe does the handoff. So once all the right conditions are met to hand off the VMI to vert handler, then that's where that part is. Okay, so we have an update status. Oops. And that comes from execute as well. Okay, so not from sync, this comes from execute. Or is it that's, sync then? That's from okay. execute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The way most of our controllers are created is that there's a there's two parts to them. So the execute is gonna have a an action part. So the sync part, that's where we're actually performing an action and then observing part where we observe the results of those actions, which is the update status part. And that's where we uh, are going to observe the cluster state and write the status. Okay, so I'm gonna do observe pod exists. Yeah, I like that characterization. So now we're gonna do uh, action, um, I don't know, hand off to vert handler. So our state is at this point, um, update status. So what else happened? Like, is there anything else that we should make note of in update status? Like what? Um, well, I guess it, it's the thing that's driving us through the phases from unset to pending and scheduling scheduled and so on. Um, so it's also looking for um, failure to launch effectively. You know, if, the, uh, if, if you don't get to the expected state or if something external deletes the vert launcher pod or something, it picks all those sort of things up. So in addition to driving it towards scheduled states so vert handler can take over, um, it's also looking to mop up the, the failure cases. Okay, so we have like, 
Um, there's unset, there's scheduling, kind of illustrate, whoops, that we're going through a bunch of phases here. Um, whoops, missed that. Scheduling and then um, oh, I missed pending, didn't I? Pending. Let's be scheduling. Pending scheduling and then uh, running. I'll schedule D. Uh, scheduled. Oh, first, scheduled. Yeah. Scheduled first. Okay. And actually. Uh, Running isn't set here. Running is set from the vert handler once it sees schedule. That's the handoff point. When, when, okay. when the update status sets scheduled and fills in a node name, that's when the vert handler knows it owns it and it'll take it to running from there. Okay, so I'm going to have this. What should I call this over here? Or is this all an update status? Or should this whole thing be update status? Uh, that is update status, all of that. And I think that's possibly what, uh, I'm not sure who the other speaker was, was saying it could do to be broken up into some smaller functions because it's a, a giant at the moment. Okay. So I'll do like this and then this and will be just off. like. Yeah, that's accurate, yeah, that was. Okay. And it also handles the failure. Okay. Actually, no, I'll just do this. This will be like logic and it's inside of itself. Like we're just, oops. We're just, um, and we're just um, doing some work. Okay. So we're setting state on the, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll come back. I'll make these, all these arrows need to go out to the vert launcher pod. So I'll change that after. Okay. So we got scheduled. Okay, so you said now we the handoff point. So the moment we set to running. So you said this update status is not the one that sets to running. Someone else, so the vert handler is the one that does it. So what's the what's the handoff point then? Like if uh, like how does the how do now how does the handler know it should set it to running? Like what's so it's observing, right? It's gonna uh, be observing. The handler doesn't observe all VMIs. There's the handoff is specifically when we set the label on the VMI, uh, the node name label. And okay. that node name label, we're using an informer on handler. So it only looks for VMIs that have the uh, node name label that matches its specific node. So the handoff for when vert handler will begin processing a VMI is at the point where we set that label on the VMI. And that happens uh, after, what do we have? It's in is scheduling condition. If the pod exists and the pod is ready, then we set this label, which does the handoff. Okay. And so that's an update status too then, that we do that? Yes. Okay. And that's another one. So we're gonna label Okay, that's just that's, the last step then. So I guess yeah, that's I guess part of scheduled. You you fill in the node name label at that point in scheduled. Can you see it's scheduled? I guess what I'll do is I'll do I'll move these up. Pending, scheduled. So we'll go like that. You said it's it's scheduled or scheduling. Scheduled. Yeah, that's the. Scheduled. Okay, and then that's what's going to come back then to the. We're going to go down to this one though. Okay, so now we're gonna label, so label, uh, or what is it like a node label or add? Um, yeah, it's literally a label on the VMI object. It's a metadata label. It's on the VMI or on the pod? The VMI, because the, um, the vert hand is, uh, it has an informer on the VMIs that have its name on it. So we're gonna add a label to VMI. Oops. And in addition to adding the label, we fill in the status uh, node name field. So um, 
yeah, that's how you you know it's transitioned to that point. Okay, we got a second one here. And then uh, what was it you said uh, something on the status? Uh, yeah, just a status dot node name gets filled in as well with the same same value. In addition to the label. Okay. Okay, so we're watching for. Okay, cool. So that looks good. So we're through the controller then. Okay, that looks good. So we do. So we're doing some watching or reconciling. We're syncing. Um, we're doing some observation and then. Um, we look to hand off to ver controller by processing each of the phases and then we label, we say we're going to be on this node and then now ver handler picks us up. So we watch a pod event <clears throat> on a specific node. So now we're probably the same thing, right? Is it vert handler watch .go, or, or watch VMI.go? I think thing. it's just vm.go, not VMI. It might not be watch. I can't remember. There's no watch. It's just yeah, take out the watch and take out the, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Okay. So this would be okay, six. Great. Okay, so we're on six now. So what happens next? This is where things get complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's another execute function, but there's just nested and nested versions of this execute. Okay. I, I think to boil it down uh, in the most simplest terms, what it does is it's going to reach out to the VMI pod through a IPC connection on the first execute, and it's going to call a sync uh, virtual machine API that's executed within the vert launcher pod, which then calls the for to start the domain. Check to VMI pod. And then it's, it's another sync call in there. And who is it? Is it I think it's Vert Handler that generates the domain XML, is that right? And, and hands it, sort of injects it to Vert Launcher, is that right? So Vert Handle, yeah, this is where it gets icky. Uh, so Vert Handler is going to hand off the VMI spec uh, just exactly the way it sees it to Vert Launcher. And Vert Launcher does a transform on that VMI spec. So it's converting the VMI spec to the domain XML, which is ultimately posted to uh, libvert. There's a, once we get into the sync, yeah, let's see, the, the specific function or API call is called sync virtual machine. And that's, we're calling the Vert Launcher client to execute that. And this uh, sync virtual machine, so this is executed on the in the vert launcher? Yeah, and the specific entry point for that, the, the, the easiest entry point is going, let me, it's a long one. Let me just write it out real quick and make sure we get it right. So the actual function is going to be within this. Uh, I'll just post it to the chat. Okay. So in this file, and it's not called sync virtual machine. <laughs> this is kind of a mess. It's called sync sync VMI. So that's that's what it actually ends up being the entry point for this. After it goes to the client and the server, and the server ultimately it hits this function called sync VMI. So we walk me through that. So like we have, we do this sync, we um, we go, so th I thought this is done over a socket, right? Like we don't, it is. like, okay. So we have a, we have a, a socket and then we hit socket. which function again? Okay. Uh, the, which the API function? call is called sync virtual machine. So that actually belongs technically on the handler side. And okay, then you so have an IPC okay. connection, which is going to go to vert handler. Okay, so we'll do this. All right, and then, all right, now we have uh, our entry point into here. OK, 
Okay. Yeah, and that's going to be on the client. Uh, sorry, the server, the sync virtual machine. Um, really, that's what just a wrapper. The server? There's a server running in Vert Launcher. So, uh, Vert Handler okay. is a client to the Vert Launcher IPC server. Uh, so it's listening for these these connections. So should I? Well, you said it, it's it's in the handler. It's on the server and handler. Should this go to this to the server before it goes to? The, you said it goes to the server first before it goes to the. Well, the, 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 sync, like a... uh, the sync virtual machine function on the back end. Let me see what it's actually called. Just called sync virtual machine, and there's a equivalent uh, server side function for this as well that gets hit. But that's that's a wrapper around the other function that I I mentioned. Um, so this is the server side file. Let me this is the chat in case it's interesting. Okay, so we can go then, I think we got the gist of it from the handler side. So we go right into the, we call a server, then we um, we get to the vert launcher over the Unix socket. And then this is where we make that call you made earlier, which was inside of manager, right? So this was in here. Was yeah, that. the sync VMI, that, that's really where it all starts as far as, um... The entry point for converting the VMI spec to domain XML and posting it and all that. Okay, then it's uh, sync VMI. Okay, and that's where we get into the complex stuff. Okay. So the virtual launch, launch is receiving effectively a raw VMI and then it, it does the conversion. Uh, I Correct. I that before, okay. I, th I thought that Handler did the translation and just injected the XML to the word launcher. So, yeah, I got no. that wrong. Not right now. Let's see if we can add another text box. So, we have a raw VMI. So, the raw VMI spec is going to be brought over this wire. Okay. Then we do a sync VMI. So how could we uh, simplify some of what happens in the launcher here? So I would say that there's a conversion between the okay. VMI spec to domain XML. Uh, I'll just say all the flow real quick. There's a conversion. There's okay. going to be a uh, set of actions that occur to generate local data. So we're talking about like cloud init disks and things like that, uh, and then after all those preconditions are met, so everything's set up that needs to be locally set up, the conversion's done with the domain XML, we're gonna post the domain and start it in Linvert. So I'm gonna convert, validate, and then post. I don't, I'm not sure if validates the right word. I would say um, convert, generate local data, whatever that means. Like we can give some examples, but there's a lot. And then, uh, and then post the domain XML to Libvert or whatever word we wanna use for that. Okay. Okay, and then this line should go to the bird. Big box for the bird.
And then what, um, I looked this up the other day, but I've already forgotten it. Uh, what, what feeds the domain informer? There's another communication channel between Vert Launcher and Invert Handler. It's called the event channel. And every time Libvert uh, has an event, so Libvert has the ability to watch for events. Every time one of those events gets popped, we send it back to Vert Handler. So that's the domain okay. um, informer part. So yeah, after we post the uh, domain XML to Libvert and the domain gets started and everything, we're getting all these events from Libvert, which ultimately make them way back to Vert Handler and Vert Handler is watching those just like a, a normal informer. Right. Uh, so we made a, a, we just used the informer abstraction. So is that and also a Unix socket? Is it the same thing? It is a Unix socket and just in the future, we'd like for there to be a single Unix socket. There's some history here. We didn't use gRPC to begin with for the Vert Handler to uh, Vert Launcher client, and we didn't have the ability to like long pull and send events back. So we had two channels when we first architected this. And uh, now that we have that ability, so there is a gRPC way of doing this, we'd like to reduce it to a single connection. We haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we got this going back and forth. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, we've posted to deliver events happen so we can figure out when um, when things are running. So now we've gone back to the domain informer. So like now we, um, the OS is booted, right? What's the, when we reach running state, this is where, like it, back to that question, where it, where are we gonna say, where are we gonna change the VMI to running? Is it after this, after this um, event comes back on the wire to the domain informer it's saying like OS is booted? And then handler goes and sets um, the VMI to running. I thought, I don't know this uh, for sure, but I, I thought it just meant that running just meant the domain's created successfully and, you know, boot. it hasn't necessarily completed boot or even successfully booted. It's just booting. Okay. So then back here, uh, then, so that's, it's true. that's my interpretation. I think, I think you might be right. I think I think I'm wrong. I think because we don't. I, I didn't see actually anything that that watches for the, for the OS. And, and so then uh, I know the domain informer gets because it's getting these events from libvert. That's where we get the additional events for when like an interface gets an IP address and, and those various things. Um, we get those from HTTP. I'm not sure if that's libvert or guest agent at that state that's that's feeding those and then and then the vert handler adds those to the VMI status. Um, as it learns during the boot of the client. Boot well, so case. guest agent, what's the difference between the guest agent and the domain informer? Is the guest agent just running right here in front of the... Guest agent the guest running agent within the guest. It's, yeah. it's yeah. running within the act, like the physical guest. Like it's, oh, sorry, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's running in the guest OS. That's how it's right. to describe it. But it's not required for any of this to work. So you can get to a running state and all that. It's the guest agent supplemental. Uh, so if it's there, great. If we're going to get some more information that gives us insights into when the guest has actually launched and um, in the future we have like uh, a, a PR, for example, where we can do uh, probes, guest agent probes that tell us when uh, the VMI is ready based on the state of the guest itself and the guest agent allows us to do that. Right. We determined that the VMI is actually running, just the running state. So that's not ready necessarily, depending on uh, what our probes are. Uh, running uh, is when we get the domain informer reporting that uh, the domain is running. So it translates directly just to what Libvert is telling us about the, the domain from an external point of view. So not what's happening within the guest, but that the QMU process is on online. That's right. pretty much it. Right. 
Okay, so that's here. That's domain informer you said. So we go all the way back to the domain informer to know that it's, and then vert handler sets it to running, right? Correct. Right, and yeah. the domain informer is just going to queue uh, a key onto the, the work queue, just like any other informer. And we're retrieving the domain information from the domain informer's cache. And that's how we're deciding that it's up or down. Okay, so we're going to set this to running here. Set. Okay, then we go and set to running. Good. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'll do that. something like that okay that looks pretty good so yeah now we're in running and yeah that's pretty much all we do uh well there's like watching other stuff but this at least gets us to create um okay that looks pretty good so there's even some more in, in info in here so i heard like um like the way that we do the informers that's also another thing that we can even dive into some more but uh okay this looks pretty good Nice. Okay. So what I'll do is um, uh, I'll clean this up a little bit just to make like the arrows a little bit more intuitive, but this gives me like the information I need to, and I think, and I'll take this and post it as like a, an image and we can publish it in the, um, in the GitHub repo. Yeah. And uh, that way we can kind of get an idea of like kind of what we, what we have right now. And then, and then the, yeah, and the informer side of things we could even explore, um, we could take another meeting if you want to do that because that's a whole other area. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, oh, actually, before we stop sharing, were there any open items? It looks like no one had anything they wanted to add. We're pretty much at time though. So, but we'll just take a second. Does anyone want to, uh, anything they want to bring up before we close for this week's meeting? I saw the email about that performance tool. I know we'll follow up more. I think it sounds great. I'm really excited about it. I would like to, to hear more about it. And I think that's something that I would like to collaborate on. And I think that there's other people across other companies that are interested in it as well. It's been a topic that's come up several times. And the idea of setting a baseline, um, I think that's, that's great as well. Uh, I'm curious, did we look at, so what was that tool cube mark? Is that right, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Has that been investigated, the, like the equivalent of what that might look like for Qfert? I, I don't think that, to be clear, I don't think that solves the problem of establishing a baseline with a real performance tool that's going to work in a real cluster or anything like that. But it's something we, could, we can run in CI, perhaps. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. So that, that'll be something um, yeah, that we can look at to doing when we want to, um, when eventually we, when we try to do horizontal scaling, we just, we just don't have the capacity for it. So yeah, like, but I haven't, I, that was something that I was, that I was interested in, um, but I haven't looked at it um, yet to get a gauge, but I, when eventually what I, when I do, uh, hopefully in the next week or two, I, I'll post what I find on the, the mailing list or we can talk about it in the next meeting um, just to get an idea of what, what it's possible and what's, what's not in that, using that tool. Yeah, fantastic. And it, it might just be that we take the concept of that tool and figure out how to yeah. apply it. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great okay. Stuff. Yeah. Well, um, again, you know, like David mentioned, we can, we can, that thread, we can, let's definitely, we'll collaborate on that. And if we want to design doc from it, that'd be great. Let's, let's make one and we can look to keep pushing that forward. And, um, and then, like I said, with the sequence diagram, I'll, I'll post on the mailing list so everyone is, is aware of it as well. So thank you everyone for, for coming and participating. This was really, um, this is awesome. We got, we got a lot done. So thank you very much. Okay. Awesome. And we'll see you in, uh, yeah, thanks everybody. We'll see. So next meeting will be two weeks on uh, Thursday, um, same time. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see you all in uh, two weeks. And if, if uh, we're on the mailing list or on, um, just as a reminder, uh, if you want to bring up topics for, for scale, I've been using the SIG scale header as like a way to kind of draw attention to it, if that, if that makes sense. And we can use it as kind of like our way we talk about these topics. So if you do have something, you use that header and we can kind of you know, to filter out some of the things that we're, we want to talk about and we can use them to 
you know, focus on some of the topics that we're bringing up today. And then also on keyword dev, I think if most people are there and we can, if we want to talk more in real time, we can use the million or using the select there. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.